We are here this morning. I'm Ira Revels. Good morning, everybody. Black Tech Future. Good morning, morning. Weekly chat. We are season two, episode three, here with an illustrious right, guest, right, man. Illustrious guest. <laughs> that is Hanifa Walida, people. If you don't know her, trust me, poet, spoken word artist, rapper, amazing human being, now curator of an awesome series of collections that we're going to talk about today. Can't um, wait. Can't wait. Welcome, welcome, Hanifa. Thank you so much. Hey, hey, hey. Me. It's good to be here. It's a pleasure. My pleasure. Right on, right on. Absolutely. So absolutely. tell people, man, what are you so? Oh my God. So I was, we were talking earlier, obviously I'm excited, but we were talking <laughs> earlier because remember like for folks who don't know, you know, what we're doing, we're looking at artists, we're talking about NFTs and in particular, um, Hanifa re represents for me and my community, which is a community of crazy black lesbians and queer people, um, an icon in our community. And so that is part of the reason why I'm so happy that I was able to meet her virtually and also invite her to the show today, man. So thank you, really, thank you for being here for all of us. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Say word, fam. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, we were talking earlier, I mentioned this, I didn't get a chance to tell this to Jamil, but we were talking earlier about um, a project that I remember her from way back in 08, 2008, 2009, called You People. And it was literally a party that I seriously wish I had been, uh, had been able to attend. But it was an amazing project that she worked on. And anyway, that's like the past, right? And here we are in the present with you now focusing on curating and the NFT space. So mm -hmm. I have 50 million questions um, I'm with in addition it. to how's it going right now with what you're trying to actually accomplish on your computer as we speak? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just loading and loading. I'm trying to buy some ETH because I'm trying to get me um, a couple of Afro droids, which starts on sale around 1017 for mm. the pre-sale folks. And this is taking forever. I'm pissed I didn't do this last night. Just need to come on. But yeah, See? so I'm watching it twirl. Actively, <laughs> actively while in it while yeah. yeah right i love it i love it yeah. this is this is what it's all about right yep. here Sometimes just on game right, right on an on an nft weekly chat while yeah. on a computer trying to get ready to buy some nfts like look at that something like that's, that's, I love that's, it. That's, that's what we that's do the thing. This, this and by the, the time you'll see this you know if you get your afro droid is you're going to have some serious fomo now, I'm not Whoa. trying to have that I'm happen. A, I'm going to have to look into it. Because you know what? I was going through your Twitter and I seen uh, Kitty Butts too. And I love the art on that. I was like, this is so cool. Oh, yeah. I, lo I love this. I'm like. I know. I'm I'm like, who would have thought? I'm going to get a Kitty Butt. Oh, yeah. I was like, I really do like, like, I love the space we're in. This is where art yeah. is. If you're exploded. a cat person, you love Kitty Butts. Yeah, look at look up kitty butts. Yeah, look at it, it's the cute, it's the cutest thing. I'm almost scared, yo. No, it has a little edge to it, but it's still cute. It's like it's it's awesome. I love the art. It's really cool. Uh, the guy who was even speaking on it, he seemed like a really cool guy from like the stuff I was just kind of digesting. Cute as hell. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, it, it it's super cool. So 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 Hanifa, why don't you? Why don't you kind of tell us, you know, of course, you know, you've had a great career in music uh, uh, leading up to, as uh, Ira was kind of explaining, you even dabbled in, in play uh, in plays and theater. Mm -hmm. uh, you've even done a documentary, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm so definitely you, a multidisciplinary. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we like. We love that. Right. We love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now, obviously, it sets you up to be in this perfect, you know, place of, of, of the NFT world of this metaverse to really bring in all these types of forms of art and bring it into this new world. So why don't you, and, and, and no pun intended, well, maybe mm -hmm. a pun intended with, with new world, but why don't you explain to us uh, what you got going on and, and then your partnerships that you that you really developed and, and where we're at now with you as a cur curator? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, stepping into the space as a curator um, was a conscious decision. decision. Um, like I was, I was talking earlier with Ira, you know, the space, the relationship has, for the most part, been between collector directly with artist, and the space has kind of propagated, you know, getting rid of the middle people. But one of those middle people are curators, and it's the, it's the one position that I think 
in this space will aid artists in enriching the space in general because it adds another artist that adds another storyteller i don't think many curators identify as gatekeepers um or you know gallerists or you know the gatekeep the the, the, the traditional gatekeepers in the art community um and in my case because i'm coming from so many disciplines um music uh theater documentary uh film poetry you name it um, I've always curated throughout my career. It might have not been called that, but essentially using whatever devices, artistic devices, to tell a story. That's for me. That's all curating is. I love how to you me. It's that. not as simply yeah. as as putting. Yeah, it's not as simple as putting images on a wall in some sort of assembly, which is and, a, and so, which is a way. Right, you know, right, it's in right. a traditional space because all we have is walls, right? Right. But now we're talking about the metaverse. Now we're talking about we we have access to technology that can help tell these stories. Um, so I like the idea of working with different artists, collaborating, where me as the curator, they're coming in to help me tell this story, or we're telling a story that's going to reveal itself together. You know what I mean? And we both don't know how it's going to be at the end. But for me, that creative process is what I really love about being in this space, you know? And when I say being in this space, I, I mean, I just, along with probably um, a lot of people, I arrived at the top of the year of 21. <laughs> Um, cause that's when I first got on the clubhouse and I stumbled into a room and found out about NFTs, went down the, the, the rabbit hole and learning. And when I got it, it was a wrap. I said, I know where I want to be or how I want to show up in the space. Um, it is tricky because, um, like I said, most relationship is between collectors and um, um, artists. So I'm trying to carve out a space for curators where um, um, artists see us as a resource, as a resource, not the resource, but a resource. Mm -hmm. to sell their work or to put their brand out there to launch their careers to accelerate their careers what have you to create opportunities within this space um i want to be one of the people to help that so my whole goal in, in curation is partnering with as many people trying to be consistent in what i put out um so that i develop a reputation um over time um it's a different road to navigate or walk in this space and there are other people um, curating in the space too, but we still are fairly young, you know? Um, so it's really interesting. Um, as far as uh, uh, specific projects, um, there's, there's two projects that I've curated so far. One's called Atomic's Dog and the other one's called Pieces of a Dream. Atomic's Dog was my first one out the gate. Um, a friend of mine, this is where George Clinton comes in. A friend of mine um, uh, got her hands on an original George Clinton piece. Um, that he made like in the late 90s. Um, she got, he literally was, uh, it was a drawing he made uh, when he first started uh, to get into visual art. Right now he's really a, um, prolific now and as far as the visual arts, it's a whole nother career for him. Um, but this is at the beginning and she had met up with him. Um, it was before a show here in Atlanta. You know, um, she was providing some, some, some herbal essence to the man. <laughs> and um and he was making this drawing at the same time and he wouldn't look up for the drawing he was really into it mm -hmm. um and so she's in this smoky room she can't breathe she said i was starting to get a sty in my eye the smoke was so thick it was smoke i could not fuck with like she's like i just want to get my money and go so when he finally looked up from it he asked like, baby what's your name she said her name he wrote her name on it and then gave her this piece and she kept it all those years, right? And yeah. then we became friends when I moved to Atlanta. So when I found out she had this piece, I thought, well, okay, this will be my, my interest into the, into the world curating. And I said, well, let's not sell the piece itself. One, we may not have the rights to do it because just because someone gifted you work doesn't mean you have the right to sell it, right? right? So, but I thought this would be a good opportunity um, to um, maybe help other emerging artists Mm -hmm. You know, so I got artists who I liked um, and I said, I'm inviting you to reinterpret this work. I'm inviting you to deconstruct this work, to take from it what you will and create a new piece of art. And that will be the collection. Oh, and then awesome. I took that. I worked with and see there was Greg and May was an artist. Owo, who is the creator of the Afro Droids, yeah. um, is an artist. Um, Anthony Meldon, Alex Sanzo, um, uh, Srila Thump. Um, these are young uh, black. Um, uh, artists in the space and at the time were really trying to come up in, in the space and I liked their work so I took it they did it and then I took it to another level I connected with this sister artsy who's one of the most prolific world builders um, in alt space which is a metaverse right um, using oculus um, it's, you know it's under Microsoft now and um, we worked together and she created 
this or envisioned um, helped me envision this um, space on Mars because they just had a designated Octavia, Octavia landing Octavia Butler landing on Mars. This is an actual right. place on Mars. Yeah. So I thought it'd be fun to create an NFT gallery and envision what it would look like at Octavia Butler or to party at Octavia Butler landing on Mars. So that's what we did. It's still up there. Um, and I made everyone's piece like, you know, cause if you've never been in all space, everything is scaled. So if something's a hundred feet high, it's gonna feel like that. So mm -hmm. I made these kind of monolithic um, pieces, sci-fi monolith type pieces, but that's what bared the art. Those were the canvases, right? Um, but moving on to the, um, the next um, one, Pieces of a Dream, that was another ambitious project. <laughs> I like how you phrase it. Like, yeah, ambitious. But, um, right. <laughs> yes, yes, very ambitious. Yes, I learned a lot. I'm learning a lot from this project. But, um, but basically, it's a partnership between myself and Brian Jackson. If you're not aware who he is, Brian Jackson um, is this legendary composer. He was the, uh, the right arm, the brother and friend of um, Gil Scott Heron. So there's no Gil Scott mm -hmm. without Brian. There's no Brian without Gil Scott. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was the 50th anniversary of uh, Pieces of a Man, um, which was their first album that they ever together. It's the one that brought up, that gave us the revolution will not be televised, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, it, you know, and then, of course, many beautiful albums came after that, you know what I mean? But um, so anyway, so Brian and I met years back when Gil passed and I was a part of a, a tribute to him and we were both involved in that. So I reached out to him um, and we, and then I reached out to other poets that we all came up together, like Saul William, Jessica Kerr Moore. We were all, you know, we're, 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 you know, we just, we're, we're of a certain cohort, right? right? So I reached out to them um, to be a part of this project. And then um, the whole idea was that uh, Brian would create like a three minute and 20 second composition. Mm -hmm. I split it up in these 20 second intervals, 10, 20 second intervals and give it to each poet to then do like a, to write and perform a haiku within that music and then pass it on to uh, 10 NFT artists to interpret what both the music and the poets done. Uh -huh. And that was the, the concept, you know? Yeah. Um, but then Brian told me about the story of Keith Lamar, um, who's a brother he's been advocating for, who's been on death row for 26 years, unjustly so. Mm -hmm. Got caught up in the, in, in the game and, um, but framed. <laughs> and um, so he's been fighting for his freedom. Right. Mm -hmm. So that so then Keith became one of the 10 poets because he's also a, um, someone who's written a book while in jail. Um, he manages a, a teenage or a, a, a teenagers at risk, a book club. He lectures at college. He does a lot. He also advocates for oh. his freedom. Right. Oh. So uh, um, that made Pieces of a Dream become something even bigger. Right. Or it added to what I thought the value of it. Um, and then when I partnered with Nifty Kid, who we'll talk about later, um, we, they gave me access to one of their parcels and that was the first time I built in crypto voxels metaverse. I love and so we built, voxels. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, graphically it's, it's interesting. Like it's, it's nostalgic, yeah. but, um, but the, it's, 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 as far as building it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a easier onboarding, you yeah. know, you can, you send someone a link, it'll drop it right and don't got to download any software, none of that. Mm. That's none right. of that. Yep. You know, and it's easy to build. So anyway, so we built Pieces of Dream, which is, uh, um, it, it allowed me to do something that I've been wanting to do with NFT galleries, because NFT galleries, for the most part, some of them are really nice. They're strong in the prowess of it and the ambition of it, and it built and it looks like whatever. And But at the end of the day, when you go in, it's just pictures on the wall, right? So I said, okay, well, since we have this amazing story, you know, we have the wealth that is Brian Jackson, his music and all these incredible poets and we have Keith's story. Let me use Keith's story as a thread to create an installation, create it, make it more experiential, you know? So I don't know if you had a chance to go in, but when you do go in, you're actually entering a prison. At least that's the first layer of it. And you have to navigate yourself through this prison, through Keith Lamar's story, even even replicated his cell right? Uh -huh. But the way the whole structure is set up, you're supposed to navigate your way up and eventually making your way to the roof. And for me, it's more of a metaphor. It's less about objectifying this man's situation, definitely putting some light on it, but not objectifying it. 
but more so um, using it as a metaphor that we all have limitations in life. We're mm -hmm. born to whatever capacity and the world says, we got limit. I'm a black, I'm a woman, I'm queer. You know, I got a Muslim name, you name it. I got checks, checks, I got checks. <laughs> you know, a thing's trying to cock block me, excuse my language. But, <laughs> you know, but how do you navigate that? How do you find your freedom? How do you find your place in the world and your purpose, regardless of whatever limitations the world tries to put on you? So yeah. that really was the, the experience that I, I, I was trying to create using Keith Lamar's story and, 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 and the work of Pieces of a Dream as a thread. Um, there's a lot going on. So those, yeah, that's that. <laughs> I could go on and on. No, that's but, absolutely um, right amazing. Now that, that led to a, yeah, that led to a, um, the artist uh, residency with Nifty Kit, um, which I can talk about you know, at another point. Yeah, right. like mm -hmm. I, love, I love how we were having a conversation mm -hmm. earlier and talking about the role of a curator, especially in this NFT space. Yeah. And you know, Nifty Kid in this case being a way for you to channel that particular, I'm saying maybe part of your part point in your career um, mm -hmm. as an artist, you know. So maybe talk about how'd you connect with Nifty Kid? Um, well, they were they still are a young company, um, mm -hmm. and you know everyone's trying to make their way. But they were the first ones. I forgot how I found out about them, but I stumbled upon them. And what I liked about their platform is that they're, they're not positioning themselves as a marketplace, you know, um, as a foundation or open sea. They are positioning themselves as the uh, platform, if you will, that truly gives artists um, some free agency um, and autonomy over their work. And they, so they themselves can become their own marketplace, which for me is at the end of the day, the fucking goal, you know, because if we're going to keep getting signed to the record labels, I mean, we're not I don't want to hear anything. nobody crying What's the point? five, 10 years right. from now when yeah. they get jammed up because they done gave all their energy, all their art to these platforms and none of it was on their own, so their own Whatever. smart contract. Yeah. Right. Whatever. You know what, before, yeah. before, because I, mean, I really want to unravel that before we get yeah. there, because I was mm -hmm. really, I was really, I love this concept that you were talking about uh, the, the a curator now versus like in this NFT metaverse versus a curator traditionally mm -hmm. and how that can be kind of seen in a negative light somehow right because right. if you think about it and ira please like because you i know you you have more experience than i do with just like traditional galleries and how that works with the curators there and how they are considered like you know the record labels the ones that hey we're the ones that are going to put you on the gatekeepers the gatekeepers put your art on our wall we'll, we're going to take 50 yeah. percent and, and, and it was just and, and it was just a place where and, and then oh and once, well, i don't take 50 percent <laughs> well, yeah, no. <laughs> so, 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 the, and that's where the conversation. Nor, nor is would I need to in this so, space, right? So, the, and this is where the conversation is now leading into where now you have artists, and, and and I love you know correlating it with musicians and 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 how their relationships are with these record labels. You have independent artists now getting you know distribution deals, right? They still might need help. They they might not need everything. They're gonna own their masters, but they'll right. do some splits for distribution because they obviously don't have those types of platforms mm -hmm. and that type of reach, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's more so pick and choose what I need from you guys. I don't need no 360 deal. Like yeah. please get, get the fuck off me. I don't need <laughs> yeah. no like, like, like yeah. right. So so yeah. now how does that transition and how can we let artists know that hey just cut so because because I I see some artists that feel well isn't this just the same thing but just virtual now like all these marketplaces open seas aren't they going to take a percentage regardless and it's like sure mm -hmm. but not no damn 50 percent like do we need to not no 50 percent honey like come on that's and they're half? not invested in fucking the end either but right right, <laughs> right. And, know, and, and, and but, i think it's an um, intention I mean, the only things that do mm -hmm. uh -huh. No, I, I, continue. I was just gonna yeah. say, I think it's an intention thing. I think it's, it's, it's a new pivot on what the curator today looks like. And I think mm -hmm. you're that, you're that, like you're that. Yeah. So like, I would like to be identified as an artist. I mean, curator is a word and right. it has whatever connotations and it is essentially it's a position, I'm, I'm not right? literally creating the art right, that right. I'm displaying, but I, I, because I know my voice as an artist, curation is just another tool. It's just another artist tool for me. So I was like, okay, even that, you know, it's art in the way that I talk to these artists, it's art in the way that I try to communicate my vision um, to them. So they have the breadcrumbs they need to do they thing. It's, it's an art to even, um, you know, when they, when they bring things back in, or when they say, well, here's my work, I may say, I may give suggestions, light, right. light, gentle, gentle guidance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, because I still have the vision 
right? right. Um, that that I'm inviting them in to help, you know, I mean, it's, right. it's obviously- It's uh, creative direction. It's, it's mutual like benefit, but yeah, uh -huh. right, you right. know, but I still see it, I'm still coming, approaching it like an artist, right? Mm, um, mm, we're creating mm. something from, I'm not taking stuff they've already made and putting it in, right? Mm, we're I'm making sure. stuff now, right? Right, right, um, right. So it's the, um, I just can't draw a straight line, that's, you know. Mm. <laughs> Right, 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 right. <laughs> you know, so yeah, so it's definitely for me, it's redefining what curation um, means. Um, it, right. Again, it still can mean putting, you know, um, you know, curation could be can making a playlist. Curation could be a lot of things, but I think this. I was this just thinking the same thing, right? Like, isn't a DJ to, somehow like a curator? Yeah, exactly. It's such a, it's, now the term is so loosely. I think this, right. the technology allows us to really expand the definition of what curation. Um, is. And, I, and yeah. I really want to encourage artists themselves to become curators because mm -hmm. they, they, they innately already are curators. They're already storytellers. You know what I mean? But, you know. And I like how you said that too earlier. And I'm glad that you brought that up again, because I really like how you tied a storyteller with curating like and, and, and being a curator. Because you're really, in my book. Right. Because yeah. right, mm -hmm. how the way you explain how you put these projects together and it, which is beautifully done, you're really taking a lot of people putting them together and you're starting with one piece and then just like really building these layers on top to ha to have something on the other end become something so beautiful and like like and and be an and, and be labeled an nft uh right. so why don't yeah so 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 now leading up to, to to nifty kit and really pushing artists to become their own marketplace and and have their own stuff what what does that look like? Like, ha have you have you really dove into that you know realm yet of really getting artists to make their own smart contracts yet? Yes, that's what we're How doing does... now actually. Um, so with the partnership with um with Nifty Kit, we're doing something called New World Curator Kits. So hmm. basically, we're leveraging um Nifty Kit. Uh, uh, the guys who own Nifty Kit um own a few parcels and um in crypto boxes. So we're starting as a test. We're taking one of those um those crypto, those parcels and building this building that is inspired by the Brill building in New York on 49th street. If quickly the history of the Brill building is just a, a building that housed a shit ton of um, ethnic songwriters in the fifties and sixties that, that wrote a shit ton of hits, but they couldn't become artists themselves because they didn't have quite the, what they were white ethnic, but they didn't have all of the white feature Anglo you know, to be an artist back then. So these like the Jewish, Russian, that kind of thing, right? And, um, but they made like the hits and, and the incubus that was in that building was phenomenal. There's a documentary on Hulu if you're, if you're interested in really diving into the history of the real building. So I said, I wanted to create something like that, that created the space for artists to come into, uh, NFT artists to come into and occupy space like an artist residency or studio, occupy space to help tell their story, to kind of guide them to how it is to curate, whether they're curating their own work or they're collaborating with someone or they're representing a community, right? Mm -hmm. um, and curating uh, that. So this whole building is going to be a few floors, um, a few sub parcels, if you will, on each floor, right? Um, some will be bigger, some will be smaller, what have you. But I want to occupy that. Um, we have the applications are open now, but occupy that with an array um, of artists that not only have great art, but who are storytellers, who are open to the idea like, okay, um, I have space in this metaverse. What experience am I going to offer people? Mm. You know, and then that collective experience being under one parcel. So this is not like a mall. People just saying, "Hey, I'm selling some shit." <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, right. like it's very intentional. Because it could easily it's look like that. Because it could e it easily. Yeah, look yeah, like that. exactly. Yeah. It's very intentional. Um, and then the outside, and it's very translucent um, or, or transparent. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of open windows. There's walls and everything. But if you're out, if you're flying on the outside, you can kind of see what's happening on the inside, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then the skin around it is kind of hive, honeycomb, bee-like. So I'm basically creating a hive. And I love the idea that because you can look inside, you can see the art inside, even if you don't go in. And you can't walk around, you can only fly inside. That's dope. Yeah, you yeah. know, so it's, it's cause, because it's, it's so many levels and it's spacious, I it's like, you can walk, but me, I don't know about you, when I'm in crypto box, just trying to go up some steps, it's the most like the awkward. Fly. <laughs> it's a lot easier to fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's a lot easier to it's fly. An I, I didn't even know you steps. can fly in crypto boxes. Yeah, you totally can. Yeah. 
Really? Oh my gosh, yes. No, 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 no. There'll, there'll yeah. be instructions because you're not going to only person who's going to be like, you can fly. Yeah, right. you can fly. <laughs> and it's a lot easier to move around. Yeah. I like to fly. Yo, who are you yeah. telling? Yeah. Man? You know, I'd be like, oh, um, it's going to take forever. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. No, 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 no. You got to fly. You got to fly. Or you'll never get nowhere, you know. But oh, um voxels is yeah, a, but that, but crypto that, voxels that's, that's is actually a problem, I was gonna say, because I remember being in there. Um, we did a show where we actually mm. um were showing folks crypto voxels, but it's a place where you can totally get lost for a while because there's so much going mm-hmm. on. Oh yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. it's stuff that's kind of sort of built, fully built. You know, and everyone's neighbors. You know, um, right. so yeah. So it's it's yeah. It's just one of of a metaverses that you know. By the you know, when we talk, you know, this time next year, there's going to be so many more metaverses. You know, but the point is to get access. You know, the ones you can buy land. The some is just free. But what's important about this, outside of my artistic venue, or in addition to my artistic venue, I you know, a lot of artists, I think having space in the metaverse just provides another way where you can present your work to potential collectors That's instead right. of them just having the 2D experience of going to whatever platform or the marketplace. Mm. Now they can interact. But I think artists, I want to help them exercise the way in which they present their work. Absolutely. So it's not literally, you know, pictures just like on a wall. Oh, yeah, just <laughs> yeah, up yeah exactly. Somewhere. Exactly. Just like, hey, I, I, listen, I'm bored. I'm bored when I go to actual galleries. The only reason that keeps right. me there is because because it's real life. Yeah. There is something that if the artist that impactful, it can it can still reach you, you right. know. But I've always right. been bored by that concept of just putting shit on the wall. Yeah, I, okay. I, I, I have. And so, so why are we doing the same thing in the metaverse? We can do so much more. Mm. That's for just literally putting them in a frame on a wall because that's what people are used to. Right. Mm. So that's like the first step that they're going to take when it comes to the metaverse. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's just natural. Whenever there's new technology, you know, we always have one foot in the old way. And as we try to walk in a new one and that's, this is no different, you know, but I, I'm, I'm immediately bored. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm not even going to tell you all the, all the galleries I've seen, but there's not one yet, you know, that I was like, wow, they doing something outside of the prowess of the building that is housed in. Right. right. People really yeah. get caught up in the building, which is cool. The architecture, which is cool, which is important. Mm. But once you go inside, what am I experiencing? Mm. How do I interact mm. with this art? Why, how do I make it mean something to me? Right. You know? Right. 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 So more how am I? Me, I think that's the yeah. challenge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was going to okay. say, the more how am I experiencing? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, we're almost at time, but I feel mm. like we have got to have you back talking at least oh, a little please. bit about um, the art of curation post, you know, so doing it in this 3D way, right? Because mm-hmm. it's not, uh, I don't think a lot of artists are definitely not used to thinking in this way, thinking in right. multidimensional um, ways. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. We have a variety of artists who obviously produce work that is spatially beautiful, mm-hmm. or depth. But now we're talking about, you know, elevating our, our all of our consciousnesses. Yeah, and the experience, the experience. The experience, yeah, right, 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 man. Right, yeah, right, right. we're human beings. We want to be told a story. It's like right, our life, love, we need to like food, water, and music. Right, right, you right, know? right. <laughs> right. You This know? is the next, like, what's next for this? We're in this metaverse. How can we elevate the way that we provide our audience an experience to, to really digest our art as opposed mm-hmm. to just hey, here it is, look at it. And of course, digital exactly. art is really, you know, ramping up. So like when you don't see anything traditional between those frames, it's something really vivid and awesome. It's like, oh, I love the art itself, but the way I'm taking it in, what are we going to do about that? And I think that's a great question to, to kind of leave and us off at. And my move to action, like, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, all of that, yeah, you know. Yeah. And you know, that can, I can, uh, I know we showed a time, we can leave it with saying that, you know, anyone who's interested, or any artist out there, one who are interested in exploring the NFT space truly, like educating yourself around it and how you can obtain some free agency and autonomy with your art, yeah. right? Um, uh I want, but also in particular, how to present your work, how to think about curation. I mm-hmm. really want to encourage you all to apply um, to this artist residency. It's called New World Curator Kits. It's an artist residency in crypto voxels. Um, you can just go to my Twitter at New World Curator. It's spelled all three words spelled as they should be spelled. And there's a link there and there's more information. Link will take you to more information in the application. 
right guys, on. please check it out. Please, check. Yeah. I'm going to check it out. Please yes, check yeah, it out, guys. definitely checking yes. it out. Because yes. you know what? That's the other thing too. I really, um, we are working right now with a couple of artists, um, and I know Jamil's been working with artists. And the idea has simply been, you know, this is what we can do. Think about this very broadly. Right. And you are given permission to think creatively. And I would love to be able to bring people, you know, other people, um, even mm -hmm. a lot of the past guests that we've interviewed, insane work that they've produced. Oh, great artists, yeah. Um, great and amazing artists. It would be beautiful to have more of a conversation with you about curation and really be able to bring people into that experience. Yeah, that'll be amazing. Something yeah. different, right, Jamil? Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Hanifa, you were such a, like, mm -hmm. a, 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 like, thank you. You gave such great insight uh, on the other side of like what, what it means for artists to, to, to build up you know, themselves to really get into this space. And uh, I think mm -hmm. it's super important to have people like yourself who are artists first, like artists focused, artists centric. Yes but like really wanting to guide them in the right way. Right? right. Um, so I, I think, I think your intentions are pure from, from, from this conversation. I think that's awesome. And I, and we have to, to stick around together. We, we have to, sure. I want to see you grow. I want to see the, the other projects that you do. Uh, I can't wait to check out uh, uh, pieces of a dream and uh, atomics dog. I can't, I can't wait to check that out. Those stories. It's all are on amazing. my link tree in the bios. Oh yeah. No, I'm, I already started following you. On, I already started following you on yeah. Twitter. So we're there. Uh, yeah. So, yeah so with that being said guys thank you so much for tuning in remember nftcreativetrader.com make sure you're no checking problem. out all the stuff that we got on there all our episodes are on there uh make sure you stay tuned uh our first episode of wtf is still being edited so it's coming out uh first mm -hmm. episode wallet tutorial get your wallet game up we have a step-by-step -step on how to do it uh for artists you're not going to want to miss this it's a super cool uh uh episode can't wait to uh, show you guys uh, I gotta, I gotta have you guys um, as uh, on part of the residency to come in and talk to the people and setting up their wallets for those who are true novices. You know, I, I don't want to that, that would be a, such, <laughs> that would be such an honor. That would That'd be, be such awesome. an honor. Yeah, they were. And if you wonder what okay. WTF is, it's what the fungible. What the fungible? So <laughs> it out. Like what the fungible? <laughs> what the fungible? <laughs> All right, Hanifa, have a great day. Thank you so All right, much. All right, have a good one. Thank you. All right, have Peace. a great. All right, peace out, everybody. Peace. Thank you.